To squat or not to squat, that is the question. And no, I'm not talking about the gym. And no, I'm not talking about taking a shit in the woods. I'm talking about these squatly fellows. Squat in stature and use a faction name many moons ago in Warhammer 40k, this describes the space dwarves. Games Workshop were bringing back the space dwarves after an April 1st announcement, uh, to much the surprise of many people. This is Warhammer Wednesday, I'm Vince, and you're aroused. <laughs> Originally, when Warhammer 40k wasn't even called Warhammer 40k, it ironically had more in common with its fantasy brother Warhammer. Originally called Rogue Trader, Warhammer the fantasy version came first. The earliest version of the futuristic nightmare dystopia that we all love to roll dice in was mainly just that fantasy Warhammer, but in space. It was an RPG-like system where two players could do battle in fun scenarios with their little miniatures, usually with a game master involved to fix rules disputes and introduce weird game elements. It was more akin to an RPG than the absolutely mega-fucked tabletop competitive war game we all pretend it is today. At the time of recording of this video, Harlequin still have between a 70 and 80% win rate on the tabletop in competitive Warhammer. Thanks, Games Workshop. Why don't you fix it, you lazy cunt? Anyway, back in the day we had space elf raiders and pirates, space orcs, and of course space dwarves. Literal ports of the fantasy races, but in space. Space dwarves appeared commonly in imperial armies of the time, often just showing up in early images and catalogue entries for them, like in the squads alongside women as well. Long before the imperial armies renamed to imperial guard or the trademarkable Astra Militarum. But they were also their own faction as well as being part of the imperial army. They were a full-fledged, full-fat, playable faction within the game, but they never got their own codex, even when codices became a thing. The closest they got to that was White Dwarf issue 1-1. One that had a comprehensive deep dive on their background, lore, and their army composition with what you could play and points totals for and all that shit. Snipe and Web do a whole video deep diving into the lore and army selections in that codex in their episode of Codex Compliant. Uh, everyone should be watching these videos because they're really fucking good. And after this, the squats simply ceased to exist. The popular consensus being that they were, well, not very popular, so Games Workshop did not feel the need to continue the line. There were no new models no new supplements, they just faded away. This actually led to the term squatting, or to be squat, becoming popular vernacular in amongst wargaming and tabletop gaming. It's a term that means to be removed from the game at large. For example, do you all remember the time that Warhammer Fantasy was squatted? Too soon? Is it still too soon? In canon, they were given snippets over the years, and the squats were supposedly eaten as a civilization by the Tyranids. We had a couple of them floating around in Necromunda as extra little models here and there referred to as squats. We had a reference to them more, most recently in a Psychic Awakening, a squat ship was mentioned, but they were kind of just gone, with just the remnants of the civilization floating around. Prior to being removed though, they were a mixture of fancy tropes like bronze, beards, axes and hammers, but with engineers being space bikers with cool shades. They rode around on rocket boards, or more commonly on the tabletop as far as I can tell from the model line, trikes. And like I said, as far as I can tell, I'm just going to put this in here that I never played with squats when I was a kid. Uh, I don't remember them very well at all. I do remember seeing them slightly in magazines here and there and on car boot sales in like um, products like Epic and stuff like that. I used to pick up a lot of random shit from car boot sales and random models. I had some Epic um, land trains. More on that in a moment. They had a version of Terminator armor that made them look like an angry fucking egg. They had a sort of living memory that passed down through their ancestors to living psychers. But most interestingly, they functioned separately and away from the Imperium for the most part, in spite of their in-canon existence being explained by them being a mutation of humans, caused by various conditions over the tens of thousands of years, like uh, high gravity planets and mineral rich shit. All, all the normal shit. They, they basically lived on mining planets because they were found dwarves in space. Wow. And this whole thing of them being a genetically or mutated version of a human, that thing still exists in contemporary 40k. Both Ratlings and Ogryn. Ratlings are halflings and Ogryn are ogres, but they're explained within the 40k canon as being mutations of humans. These mutations are allowed to live when they're useful, with Ratlings and Ogryn often serving in the Imperial Armies of Planets or the Astro Militarum. And the Space Dwarves were kind of the same. Squats were allowed to have their own religion 
religion and have their own colonies, and the Imperium didn't seek to eradicate them because they were useful. The early lore paints the engineers of the Squats in particular as very proficient, or some of the most proficient people in the galaxy with technology, almost in the same way that the toaster fuckers of Mars, the tech priests, and the Adeptus Mechanicus have came to be in contemporary lore. In modern 40k, the Admech, the Adeptus Mechanicus, they are allowed to praise the Omnissiah and worship a god that isn't the Emperor because they're deemed useful. There has been wars over this in the past, but treaties have been brokered, and there's a peace within the Imperium in spite of this conflicting religion and conflict with the Imperial dogma. In many ways, I would posit, and this is my own theory, that the Squats were, in a thematic sense, the prototech priests and Admech, even if those things were floating around in the peripheries of the canon at the time. The engineers of the Squats were highly valued for how good they were with tech, and therefore they were allowed to practice this living ancestor psychic memory shit that would have been considered heretical elsewhere. So that brings us to today. The League of Voltan. This thing. They're of course not going to be called officially Squats, because they need a name that they can copyright and trademark. Instead we have the Leagues of Votan, although the Warhammer community website is referring to them as Squats when talking about their sort of history. This was all announced on April 1st, so we all thought it was a joke, which would have really fucking annoyed me, because... Well, people have wanted squats for a long time. People want a new faction for a long time. For them to have done it on April Fools and then turn around and not actually make it a real model line would have been pretty fucking bad. Why they did it as a joke, I don't know. It's almost like they don't understand how April 1st works. I was incredibly hyped in the lead up to the reveal that this could be a real thing. I want squats to come back, but not because of some sort of nostalgia for squats or space dwarves of the past. Because like I said, I don't really remember them outside of a little bit of references here and there in my childhood. And I think it's the same for many. I don't think the, the, the love or the demand or the meme for squats to return is a thing of nostalgia for a lot of people. There of course are some older collectors and older hobbyists that will be excited for squats. Please down in the comment section below if you're one of those people. But I think people of my age and younger will not remember them. But still, having a new faction added to 40k is so unusual. Like, I took a break from the game for like 15 years. I came back and there's like, what, two new factions? Tau were the new faction when I left. And they got, we got Admech, Knights, and Custodies in that time. It's kind of weird, right? So what do I think of this actual model? Well, it's got this sort of like cleaner, almost retro sci-fi look that some people rightfully are comparing to the Gene Stealer cult. What the Warhammer community post tells us is one, these guys are using dark age of mankind technology, things that are 10,000 years old or more, and two, that they're using things that are heretical to the Imperium. What this means is that they've been hidden in the fringes or hidden behind some sort of warp tower or something for a long, long time and have old technology. And if they're using things that are considered heretical, well, what could that be? It could be their use of psychic energy could be really, really strong. They have that living ancestor thing going on. But I think it's more likely that they use AI. In Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress, a supplementary board game with models that are compatible with the 40k game as a whole, we have the Men of Iron. This thing is a AI-controlled robot. In the far-flung distant future of the 41st millennium, where there is only war, there is no AI, or at least not within the Imperium. Sometime before the records that we have now, we're talking pre-heresy, we're talking pre-First Crusade, mankind had a problem with AI. Much like in lots of science fiction, robots rose up and tried to kill us. The Men of Iron were a, a hostile AI threat, and they were eradicated. This is a leftover from that time. So this is an ancient robot. The way it looks, it is reminiscent of the Space Dwarves, the League of Votan, and if they've got heretical tech, or heretical... Well, tech, technology, it's this, right? I think it's going to be AI robots. In many ways, I think the League of Voltan will have cues from both the Admech and the GSC in terms of, due to the cult that is, in terms of their not only mechanical identity, but their themes, flavor, and aesthetic. They're going to be miners with industrial weaponry and industrial gear that they use to mine planets, but they're also going to have retro science fiction robots. The Admech already touched into this, and like I said, Thematically, the early squats might have been a proto Admech in many ways. The contemporary Admech have these sci fi robots, the Castellan robots that look like something from Lost in Space. I will not lie to you, I was incredibly excited for the existence of squats or space dwarves coming back to Warhammer. This is a thing that's been floating around in the ether and leaked a little bit since I came back to the hobby um, almost two years ago. And I have a soft spot for dwarves in general. I love Gimli, he's probably my favourite member of the uh, Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, my main or most popular or favourite. D&D character of all time was a Dwarven Paladin that I played from level like 2 to 40 during 4th edition. Uh, I'm just a big fan of the Dwarves in Warcraft 3 as well, the Riflemen and the Mount 
Mountain King, of course. I've always had a bit of a thing for playing as and playing with dwarves. That said, this model is just okay, I guess. It's different, it's cleaner, and it's an alternative Imperium faction, which has a lot of interesting ramifications for the greater law if they're not Imperial aligned, showing that humans can survive in a way that doesn't need some pseudo-fascist dystopian state thing. But on the whole, this model is rather underwhelming and not the most exciting thing to show off a new faction. On the note of being a more hopeful human society, some people think from the look of the clean armor they might be Tau aligned, and I would fucking hate that. I do not want to see the Tau get their grubby mitts all over these dwarves. Further to that, I've seen people say there's red flags, like Votan is a, a Germanic word for Odin or some shit. But I think pretty much anything Games Workshop put out would be a red flag for some people. I saw someone comment that the haircut of this dwarf was a red flag. A thing that was referencing neo-Nazism or some shit. Like, look, Peaky Blinders is fucking popular, all right? To have thick hair on top and a shaved undercut is a part of men's fashion right now. I don't think fucking the new Dark Confident they put out in Modern Masters 1 was some reference to fucking fascism. It's just a trendy way to have your hair cut at certain points in time. I don't want to dismiss that there isn't you know, a fear when it comes to new factions and new parts of the law touching upon things that invite sin undesirables. Hell fucking knows we've got some fucking pricks in the Warhammer community. But I do think people are pearl clutching a little bit. So there was some controversy and some backlash in some ways between two different forces. One that is hoped for everything the Games Workshop ever does and those that are upset about everything Games Workshop ever does. It's fucking bizarre to see this happening. There are people who are criticizing and saying it's just a meme that you're not really nostalgic for old school dwarves. And they might be right that people aren't actually nostalgic for the squats, but they might still like dwarves in fantasy or the Caradon overlords in fucking um, Age of Sigma. Or like I said, they might just like things like the, the Mountain King and the Griffin Riders and the, and the Riflemen, or they play dwarves in World of Warcraft. Who fucking knows? Also, anyone is gonna get excited about a new faction because it's kind of a unique and exciting thing to happen in 40k, like I said. One criticism I've heard that really fucking annoys me is that we don't need a 19th faction. Or if we include Space Marine, like you need some factions to like 26th or 27th. And quite frankly, I think that's fucking absurd. What the fuck are you talking about? People are saying it's more bloat, but this game is fucking bloated whether you add another faction or not. It's to do with how the rules are laid out, badly written and not templated. That was not gonna change with another faction. Hell, you don't even need to fucking buy this book. It's not a thing that your faction might even interact with in any way. Way, unless you really need to know every faction when you go down to your game store to get a game against your new League of Votan opponent, you're probably going to be okay. Again, I think that's finding a fucking problem where there isn't. There's this other thing that Tyranids didn't get a line refresh, which are pretty much the only ones who really, really need it now. Uh, Eldar did get a big line refresh. I've made videos on this channel saying they should get that. So I do see some people being frustrated that their faction has been left out. I mean, fucking Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, sorry, don't have two wounds yet. It'd be very funny if the League of Votan managed to come out and have two wounds before we got a CSM book. So that criticism, I can understand that. I mean, it's probably different teams working on it, maybe but not definitely. The people who are designing the rules for this stuff will be working on that other thing as well. But on the topic of separate teams, the people who are trying to fix the competitive game of Warhammer right now by FAQing and data slating this fucking mess we've got are not the ones fucking stylizing, conceptualizing, or modeling these fucking models. So the League of Vatan being created is not going to take away from the need for playtesters or rules writers to an extent. There'll be a little bit of crossover with the rules writers, but that's about it. I feel like a right fence sitter because I often am critical, but I'm not hating everything GW do, and I'm not defending them to the fucking hell like I've also seen. I've been told that I need to fuck off and die or fuck off and leave the hobby for posting on a Facebook group a thing about how Warzone books suck. I feel like this weird... I mean, I'm not a centrist in my real life, but in, in Warhammer am I a centrist? Because I'm just not leaping to extreme conclusions on either of these. But that's the community reaction, and it's all overblown. And I guess having a discourse to talk about helps, right? It helps to pass the time. Everyone wants to make videos on this. Hell, I'm making a video on this, but I only make videos on Wednesday, so I'm a bit late to it. So where do we go from now? Well, I am probably going to buy squats if if the model line ends up being as good as it could be. This current model is a little bit dull, I will not lie, but there is some promise there. The old school biker stuff, the trikes, the fucking egg armor, the uh, retro sci-fi tech, the AI and the robots. And if we look a bit deeper, there's some other cool shit we might see from them too. The silhouette during the reveal video showed a character with a fucking pickaxe. There's gonna be some of that dorkiness in there and I cannot wait for that. I wanna see the land trains of Epic and the airships 
types of epic come back as well. The Dwarven range in AOS is wonderful. All of them are, especially the tech-savvy ones. I was thinking of just getting some of these to convert to Orc stuff anyway, so I'm hoping we see a similar, not just port of this airship, but this kind of stuff in 40k would be very fucking cool. I'm going to reserve judgment until we see a couple of characters, a couple of vehicles, and some centerpiece models. I'm really excited to see if they do like a kill rig style thing, but it's a big like drilling train motherfucker. In short, my interest is peaked, but the initial reveal is, after the hype of a new faction being announced, a little bit underwhelmed. So I'm reserving judge, but I'm ready to buy a new army for a new faction. Even though I'm currently not allowed to buy models. I told myself I can't buy models, I can't buy the new avatar, for example, until I paint some of these fucking models. I painted one obliterator last week. Fuck. So that's where we're at. The community is being a bit weird. We've got a new thing coming to Warhammer. I'm excited for it because it's an old school retro deep cut. And the model line has a fucking huge amount of... What's the word I'm looking for? Potential. The potential is huge. You might see me doing a uh, model line review video in um, six months time. Moaning about it when we finally see it. They're coming later in the year. Hopefully after most armies have got their book. I'm assuming someone's going to get left out in the cold. I'm going to guess it's going to be CSM or Imperial Guard. We will see. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Smash that like button. I've been Vince and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.